TV recap here. Today I'm going to explain a drama fiction series called Lock and Key. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The series follows the story of the Locke family after the man of the family, Rendell Locke, passes away. The family gets caught up in a world of mysterious and magical keys. The first episode begins with a man learning about the death of Rendell Locke. He quickly enters the house and takes a key from a hidden vault. The man stabs the key in his chest and he bursts into flames. Three months later, the Locke family, made up of Nina, Tyler, Kinsey, and Bodie, head towards their ancestral home in Massachusetts. They stop by an ice cream shop and get some for free. On the way out, Bodie wonders why the shop attendant recognized them. When they reach the house, Duncan, Rendell's brother, greets and welcomes them inside. He then gives the family a tour of their new home. During that time, Nina notices that the house isn't properly maintained. When Duncan finishes, the kids go their separate ways and explore the rest of the property. While talking to her uncle Duncan, Kinsey sees Tyler wandering outside. She goes to meet him and they talk about their current situation. After a while, they take a photo and send it to their family's group chat. Nina sees the picture and starts recalling what happened to her husband. A flashback plays of Nina painting in their old home when her husband Rendell comes to flirt with her. A man named Sam Lesser arrives and he's looking for Rendell. After Rendell tells him they'll talk another day, the agitated Sam says he can't wait. Sam then pulls out a gun, points it towards Rendell, and demands he tell him everything he wants to know. Rendell declines, so Sam shoots Nina in the leg. Sam asks Rendell about the key house, but he still doesn't give him the answer he wants. When Rendell tries fighting back, Sam shoots him in the chest. Back in the present, Bodie, the youngest child in the family, explores the property and finds a well. He takes a photo of the well, but drops it. Moments later, he gets surprised to find it back at the top of the well. He then calls down to the well and gets shocked when a female voice answers back. Scared, Bodhi runs back to the house to tell everyone what happened. The entire family goes to the well and finds nothing. They then conclude that it's just Bodhi hearing things. The next day, the children prepare for their first day in school, and Duncan leaves for Boston. Duncan gives Nina the keys to the house after the children leave for school. Outside, Duncan flips his finger at the key house before leaving. Bodhi sees him, and Duncan says it means aloha. He tells her about his group and gets invited to join them. Meanwhile, Tyler attends hockey practice and gets reprimanded of his father's death. The Locke family seems famous in the town, especially since everyone knows what happened with their father. Nina leaves for the hardware store and leaves Bodhi in the house. While alone in the house, Bodhi starts hearing whispering voices. Being a curious child, he ends up going to the well again. He then starts talking with the female voice that now calls herself Echo. She reveals that their house contains many magical keys. She also tells him about the appearance of the Anywhere key. As its name suggests, the key will take the user anywhere in the world. To find these keys, Bodhi has to listen to their whispers. After learning how to find these magical keys, Bodhi gets one after breaking apart Kinsey's bracelet. It is the Anywhere key, and he uses the key to open a door leading to the ice cream shop. There, he meets Scott and gets ice cream. When he comes back to the house, he tells Kinsey what happened. Kinsey then sees her bracelet destroyed and gets angry at her younger brother. Bodhi explains that the key came from her bracelet and tries showing her how it works. Unfortunately, the demonstration fails and Kinsey believes Bodhi is making things up again. Later that day, Bodhi finds another key in the kitchen sink drain. It has a mirror and two faces. Not knowing how it works, Bodhi goes to ask Echo about it. She tells him that the key will make him see people that have passed away. Echo implies that Bodhi can use it to see his father. That night, Tyler attends a party and hooks up with Eden. Their intimate time gets interrupted when Sam Lesser appears in Tyler's mind. The imaginary Sam accuses Tyler of causing his father's death. Tyler apologizes to Eden and leaves her alone. While that happens, Kinsey meets up with Scott and his gang. They watch a zombie film and start talking about girls in such movies. Kinsey recalls hiding for her life in their old house while Sam Lesser taunts her. She freaks out and leaves Scott's company. On the way home, she gets picked up by her brother Tyler. Bodhi uses the mirror key and hopes he will meet his father. The mirror shows Bodhi's reflection, but it wears a wicked smile. Scared, he calls his mother and she ends up getting entranced by seeing her reflection. Nina then walks through the mirror and gets trapped inside. Inside the mirror world, Nina finds multiple reflections of her. She tries touching one of them and it causes the mirrors to crack. Nina then starts panicking and asks Bodhi for help. 
An alarmed Bodhi goes back to the well and plans to ask Echo for help. When he arrives, Echo is already out of the well and reveals what the mirror key does. She then asks for the key that takes the user anywhere, and when Bodhi gives it, she leaves him behind. It turns out she was tricking Bodhi all along to retrieve the anywhere key. Out of options, the determined Bodhi grabs some rope and goes back into the house to help his mother escape. He then meets his siblings and tells them what happened. To prove he's telling the truth, he shows them the mirror. Tyler decides to rescue their mother from the mirror prison. Kinsey ties the ropes to his body so they can pull them out of the mirror. Tyler enters the mirror world and learns it's like a mirror house from hell. After some struggle, Tyler asks his mom to close her eyes and focus on finding his voice. The plan works and they find each other in the mirror world. Shortly after that, Kinsey and Bodhi pull them out of the mirror. After escaping the mirror world, Nina zones out and starts acting strange. It seems she doesn't recall anything that happened moments ago with the mirror. The children can do nothing but look at Nina as she leaves to do chores with a disturbed look on their faces. Next, we see Sam Lesser in prison. A guard is asking him to meet a visitor. The first episode ends after showing that the one visiting Sam is Echo. The second episode picks up the morning after the mirror world incident. Just like that night, Nina doesn't seem to recall what happened. Trying to rationalize things, Kinsey says that it's just a hallucination caused by molds in the house. Bodhi uses the key again and shows Kinsey her evil reflection to prove her conclusion wrong. Tyler quickly stops what they are doing and asks Bodhi if it's the only key he has. Kinsey then asks him about the anywhere key from her bracelet and he lies that he lost it. Tyler then keeps a mirror key from Bodhi to prevent the incident from happening again. Kinsey then tells Bodhi to behave and to not touch any keys if he finds any. While leaving for school, Kinsey asks Tyler what it was like inside the mirror world. He tells her it was like a fun house from hell. Meanwhile, Bodhi grabs a toy sword and patrols the house. He ends up getting surprised by his Uncle Duncan. Sometime later, Bodhi hears whispers coming from a vacuum cleaner. He finds a new key hidden in its dirt bag. Later at school, Tyler learns that rumors about him and Eden hooking up have already spread. Tyler doesn't deny them and goes with the flow. Back at the key house, Nina gets a visit and a gift from Ellie. She is the mother of Rufus, the person maintaining the key house's grounds. Nina shows Ellie a photo of Rendell when he was young. In it, Rendell is with friends, including Ellie. Their conversation gets interrupted by a call from school about the Locke family's tuition papers. Ellie looks at the photo with a concerned face and politely tells Nina she has to go. After giving up on figuring out what the new key does, Bodhi goes outside and finds a shed. He encounters Rufus and learns he's a weapons expert. He asks for advice about dealing with an unknown enemy and receives a bear trap from Rufus. In a diner somewhere, a hungry Echo devours a massive breakfast. She then uses the Anywhere key and moves to a clothing store for a dress. After that, she uses the key again to steal an expensive necklace and enters a dance club. She meets a young man in the club and takes him to bed. While getting intimate, Echo chokes the young man and takes his life. She then leaves him behind like nothing happened. At school, Scott apologizes to Kinsey for what happened the other night. He then invites her to see the set of the short film he and his team are working on that day. Meanwhile, Nina meets Rendell's old teacher after submitting the tuition forms of her children. Nina learns that the teacher knows her husband well. The teacher then reveals that a tragic accident happened with Rendell and his friends when they were young. Unfortunately, Nina doesn't learn much because their conversation gets cut off. We then see Tyler experiencing a flashback about his father. The flashback shows Rendell calling Tyler to the guidance counselor's office to talk about Sam Lesser. He asks him to reach out to Sam and befriend him. A frustrated Tyler tries to deny his father's request to protect his social status, but to no avail. After the flashback, Tyler hears Nina calling him. She reveals why she's at the school as Tyler walks her back to her car. Before leaving, she tells Tyler to look out for Kinsey since she doesn't make friends as quickly as he does. Tyler then sees a guy scratching the car paint on Hobby's car. Tyler locks eyes with the guy but doesn't do anything. Later that day, Bodhi shows his new key to a hardware store attendant. The attendant is amazed by the key after taking a closer look at it. He checks his stash to look for other keys that look like it. While that happens, Bodhi sees a keyhole appear at the back of the attendant's neck. After failing to insert the key, Bodhi gets a jar full of old looking keys. Meanwhile, Nina is shopping in the hardware store when she finds a hammer. After closer inspection, she sees the hammer is smothered with blood. 
Nino then gets a flashback of hitting Sam lesser in the head with a hammer during Rendell's incident. When she snaps back to the present, she sees the hammer is clean and puts it back on the rack. Kinsey finds a script of Scott's film in her locker at school. While she happily skims through it, Tyler arrives. Kinsey shows her displeasure towards her brother's recent behavior. While they are about to make up, Tyler leaves her behind again. Then, Ellie drops by the key house and Nina asks her about the tragedy she learned earlier. Ellie reveals that Rendell's friends drowned in a sea cave outside town during their senior year. They were out celebrating their graduation. The group failed to notice the rising tides and several of Rendell's friends lost their lives. Nina then wonders and asks Ellie why Rendell never told her about these things. Ellie says maybe he doesn't want to revisit the awful memories. She adds that even she doesn't talk about it at all. Bodhi returns to his room, carrying the trap that Rufus gave him. He sets it on his bed and uses one of the old keys from the hardware store as bait. It seems the child plans to use the key as bait and trap Echo. Shortly after that, he also finds a keyhole at the back of his neck. Meanwhile, Tyler goes to a convenience store with Javi and his friend. They encounter Logan and Tyler recalls him scratching Javi's car paint earlier. The group steals some alcohol and gets caught by the store owner. Tyler gets left behind, but Logan saves him from trouble. Later, Echo shows up in Bodhi's room with a teddy bear. She sees the key lying on Bodhi's bed and picks it up. The trap doesn't work on Echo and she ends up choking Bodhi as a warning. She then tells him to look for more keys and that she'll come back for them later. At Scott's film set, Eden quits the film team because she dislikes the idea of being smothered by fake blood. Without a lead actress, Kinsey steps in to fill the role. When she gets smothered by the blood later, she recalls the incident with Sam and gets a panic attack. Nina and Duncan have dinner that night while waiting for the children to come home. When Nina asks Duncan about the tragedy that night, she is surprised to learn that he has no recollection of it. Their conversation gets interrupted when Kinsey arrives smothered in fake blood. Kinsey tells the worried Nina and Duncan that it's nothing and she'll go clean up. In her room, Kinsey recalls a memory of her father giving her the bracelet that contained the Anywhere key. She then starts sobbing after remembering that sweet but painful memory. Meanwhile, Bodhi finally inserts the key in the keyhole behind his neck. His body freezes, and after a few seconds, another version of himself appears behind the frozen body. He opens a big wooden box and sees flashing lights. Shortly after that, Tyler arrives at home and gets confronted by Kinsey. She tells her brother that she covered for him that night. She then starts calling him out for changing and not being open to her anymore. The two begin to argue, and Kinsey expresses her frustration towards her brother. Suddenly, Kinsey notices Bodhi standing still in his room. When she and Tyler get closer, they see the key stuck in Bodhi's neck. While the two siblings try to figure out what happened, the other Bodhi appears from the box behind him. Excited, Bodhi tells Kinsey and Tyler to follow him inside the box, and the second episode ends. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel. Thank you.